Hey everyone, Nathan here from PH Studios. Welcome back to another networking tutorial for uh, XNA. And last tutorial, we went deeper into the communications and were able to communicate differently depending on what the data was sent. So we actually went into the protocols. In this tutorial, I'm going to explain, go even deeper, and explain how to read data depending on different protocols. As you see, when a player has connected, we do one thing, but when a player disconnects, we do something else. I will take a little step further and read data depending on what the information, what the protocol is. Okay, so right now, the only two things that we can communicate are when a player connected or when a player disconnected. We're still concerning ourselves with the server here, just getting things communicated properly then we can add the second game and at that point we can add sprites and I'll probably just use my spaceship sprite it's the quickest thing and it works with everything uh, so anyway let's go ahead and get things set up for just demonstrating you how to you how to read data depending on the different protocols so if we look at the server you will see that if we allow the new, uh, when, if we allow the protocol to be sent when a cl client connects or disconnects, it will send the information, and it will send it by protocol, user ID, and user IP. So we are sending a byte and a string. Now. One of the biggest issues that you might run into is when you try to read a string when actually it's a vector or you'll try to read a float when it's a integer or just something like that some data mismatch uh, it could cause some trouble if you're trying to read a a double instead of when you sent it a float I have not tried I like to keep things as perfectly synced as possible so just keep in mind that if you you read the same order as you sent it and you read the same data types as you sent it so we know for a fact that we're gonna send the ID and IP if a new player has connected now when a player has disconnected we're gonna send the ID and IP as well so we need to read the byte then the string and the client so now if we go back to the client, we can say byte ID is equal to reader dot read byte. And then string IP is equal to reader dot read string. Alright, so now let's just modify the message box. New player has connected. Okay, so here's a little quick tip for you guys. Uh, instead of using the string player has connected colon uh, end quotes plus ID plus quote space the IP addresses space quote uh, instead of all that you can just string out format which is pretty cool actually. So we can just format the string just like it is here and we can enter player has connected okay we can say we want a variable to be at this specific spot and uh, let's do one space but we want a variable that we'll decide later it's gonna appear right there and then we have two spaces the IP address is space and then another variable which we'll decide later on Okay, so once that's done, we exit the string and then we press comma. So now we pass the argument for the bracket zero bracket. So we want it to display the ID. And comma again, and then we want it to display the IP. End parentheses, and then now that's the way it should be. Okay, so since it's the same thing, we pass it the ID and IP if the player has connected or disconnected. Let's just copy and paste that, and then let's change disconnected. And we should be good to go. 
Okay, so last tutorial, I did mistype the disconnected. So let's just go ahead and change that, and then you can click this, and you, you, we can rename it. And it'll rename all calls and references, references to that protocol. Okay, so let's press F5 and run the game. And let's see what we come up with. So we need to start telling it. Okay, so it says player has connected, the ID is 1, and the IP address is 127.0.0.1, which means it's this computer, and the port. So it includes the port. Click OK. Now we disconnect, and it disconnects. So the server ID and then the port. So why do you want the ID? I think I mentioned this in the first video if not do you want the ID because if you're like me and playing two clients on the same computer you need the ID because it will have the same IP now it might use a different port uh, so you can just look at the port if you want to uh, but I think the ID is the best way to go to distinguish one client from another client so anyway, that's what you need to do. Now let's go ahead and try something else here. Now everything is wrapped in a try catch. So we were expecting a byte first. Well, let's go ahead and read uh, a double. And let's see what happens. Now we we'll press F5. Ah, oh, we can't convert it to byte. Double ID. Now press F5, run it, and then start tilting out again. Okay, so look what happened there. It, we just couldn't read at the end of the stream because the double takes a lot more space than the byte. So you will get into some issues if you change the data type if you sent a byte but trying to read something else you could run into issues uh, just because one data type will have a larger size than another data type so reader dot read byte and it's a byte again all right so that's it for this tutorial I hope you enjoyed it Next tutorial, we'll go ahead and expand on this and actually get two games to connect instead of using one game and one Telnet client. We'll just get two games to connect. So I hope to see you next time.